Are you seated comfortably? Then I shall begin. Tonight is a tale of Bob. If you like this kind of stuff. And if you don't and you can't turn it off. Contact me, Church House Classics. It is all one word at gmail.com. And if you fancy supporting the channel or just plain buying me a pint because I've amused you or whatever, then there's a PayPal meeting scrolling down here. I thank everyone personally. Anyway, enjoy the video. Passenger side D post. Obviously, obviously it's off the car. Duh. Um, so what I've basically got here is just the passenger side um, roof rail that I bought salvage and I've stripped all the bits I need off it and it's ready pretty much to start cleaning up the edges and welding it on welding it back onto its original weld marks what I've also done here is these the this is effectively this bit up here except on the passenger side it will be effectively be this bit here <laughs> so that's that that bit goes up there so I'm not going to use this, this yellow bit this Bahama gold bit but it did cut with the seatbelt brackets to go in up there. So I'm going to make sure I weld those in before it all goes back together again. Because that will allow me the top mount for the seatbelt. What I'm missing though is the lower mount for the seatbelt. Um, because these have unfortunately been chopped off just above where I need that bit from. So I'm, I'm basically there's a plate which goes down here which mounts the reel. And then this piece up here is where the seatbelt kind of hooks onto. I believe, this is what Tim's telling me, my car's not here at the moment. I've got, um, I've still got Adrian's car because I don't know if I'm going to go and buy uh, an engine in Norfolk this week or not. Um, but uh, yeah, so that, that, that effectively is scrap now, except what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill through the spot wells down here and use that piece there to replace that bit down there. Yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? Um, this one over here, I didn't do that to. Um, there's much less corrosion on this side, so I'm rather hoping that the other piece that I've got here, which I had started to drill through, might be suitable. Might. <coughs> worst comes to the worst, I'll just bend another bit of steel. If I can avoid bending a bit of steel, then I can avoid bending a bit of steel. Um, but I need to drill through these spot wells down here. You can see there's quite a few of them up this edge. It really did go out of their way to put a lot of spot welds on there. And there's like, on the seatbelt mount, there's five. <laughs> and on this, there is one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. 12, 14, 15. I'm going to guess there's one about there, 16, 17, 18, probably 19, 19 or 20 spot welds down there. <clears throat> probably only needs about three. But anyway, it is what it is. Um, along the top edge here, I've got a few I need to drill through. One, two, three, four, five, eight, eight there. I'll get all those out. Um, now, the only thing that I did have on the donor top rail, which I didn't have on this top rail, was this panel here, which welded on about there. Well, I don't know what that's for. My brain is being racked to work out why that would be at the top edge of the passenger side rail above the headlamp. If you look at this, so if we go to the arse end of it, you can see it's welded in about there. You can see the line of spots welds down here, which would go onto there. So effectively, what I'm going to do is weld this onto there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. And I haven't got my um, my polytunnel full of reference cars to pick my nose over. Uh, the other thing I did manage to get, look at this bit of, came with um, the donor palm. It's nice, isn't it? This car won't need them because this car's having seat belts, later seat belts. But effectively, look at that. It comes with all these pegs and everything. Very nice. A couple of little holes on here that someone has drilled in there. For some reason, I can't fathom out. Really can't fathom that out. Um, but um, yeah, I can fill those up with a bit of resin. Very good, eh? Right. I'm going to get on with drilling this thing apart, taking all these spot welds apart. You can watch, but I'm going to time lapse it. Um, so we can have some bingly bangly music going on in the background. 
Um, and then I think we'll start tidying up these edges. I'm not going to weld today because it's nearly four o'clock now um, and I don't want to be because it's cold today. Temperatures drop right down. Raining as well. Adrian's truck waiting patiently out there. There is one nice thing about a full-on project like that is that if you really don't fancy welding because it is so flipping cold again there's always something to do there really is always something it's a project of this size you're never gonna have a day off so you just cherry pick the jobs you want to do and I'll I'll have a welder-thon but it ain't gonna be this morning because it's like minus two here today for some reason I don't understand why but it is I've got a pair of prop shafts that need rebuilding these are the prop shafts that came from the uh, 1990 VM donor that gave us the gearbox, so they're matched to it. Um, so I've got a pair of prop shafts to rebuild. I've got um, a steering box over here that needs to rebuild. I'm going to take it apart and see if I can uh, just, just check it out. It's, it's a used old stock steering box. If it works, it works. I know it's a four bolt box. I've got a three bolt box in it. Um, I was just thinking about the uh, pump and other odds and sods. It's not a foregone conclusion that the four bolt box is going to go in. Fret not. Diff needs painting, but it's too fucking cold today to paint, I tell you. But I need to put the nuts on it. Yesterday I got all of the inner wing structure around the front. I can lob the bonnet on. Check alignment. Oh, good lord. What else have I got going on with this project? An enormous... Oh, I found these, by the way. <laughs> there they are. An enormous box of parts that need the spot welds drilling out of. I even found the original wing supports that go on to the side. I might not use these, but we'll see. I'm not a slave for using parts that were originally on the car, but so far, you know, <laughs> it's heading in that direction. I've got a heater box that I've painted. I just needs to go back together again. Has the paint gone off yet? Yes, the paint's gone off. Um, I've got a boat anchor. <laughs> got a wiring loom. Radiator arrived, um, so it's a used radiator. Please for that, that'll do the job. I've got driver's door that needs welding out. I just said I wasn't gonna do welding, but I can start fiddling and fucking around with the electric window most that it's, it's gonna go in there. <sighs> it's just my fingertips are freezing. I'm gonna get the heater on in a minute. So I'm just gonna put the radio on, put the heater on, and I'm gonna do odds and sods today, I really am. Um, these bits, by the way, I've made these in the past. This is the fuel filler tube, and this famous four press this out. Now, I've made these using a shrinker and a stretcher, and yeah, you know, it's taken me about two hours um, to knock one of these out. Famous four, I think they're just pressing them. Uh, strictly speaking, they're not original because I think the curve should go right the way round, but they're good enough. And for the cost of them, they fit like a flipping glove. That's the original one off Allen, believe it or not. And I always keep that because I use it as a template. Uh, and you can see here where it's original all the way down to there. All of this is the original tube and then someone's welded this. Well, I know who did it, Alan. Because Alan was a welder. Alan, the previous owner for Alan, welded this chunk of metal over the top. Not beautiful, but it was effective. And again, never chuck anything away because you never know. It goes down here in my useful pile of Range Rover parts. These two, these two are the um, original early style seatbelt mountings that went onto the inner frame. So kind of about here, really. About there. And then the seatbelt came down from wherever and mounted. So that was one seatbelt mounting. There was another seatbelt mounting that went onto there the leading edge of the uh, so this one here is for I think this is for the driver's side that goes down there the seat rests on it I don't suppose you can see that at all can you yes you can um, so that goes down there but what I'm going to do I think is I'm going to liberate the bottom that's a piece of the floor there that needs to come off um, and then I can use the rest of it 
more or less as a template. It's been a beaten around a little bit, but there's enough there for me to use it as a template. A uh, couple of points of interest. Yay, MIG weld wire. Gotta love that. That's original factory MIG weld wire there. Yeah, no. Tell what, what what thickness of wire they used. You all want to know? Anyone interested? There you go. So that's the two seatbelt mountings. Um, and also, that there is where the original, this is on the passenger side. So this piece here would have been here, where the, where, where the goal post goes up. Goal post, what are you talking about? Where the D post goes up, D post cover goes up. It goes there. I think that's that. Um, yeah, so that's go on the useful pile down there now. Right, okay, um, I'm gonna see if we can get this one sorted out. I should have two of these. I can't find the other one though. It's a bit worrying. It'll turn up, I'm sure. Um, and then the other thing I need to do, these fellas here, these are the brackets that go on the outside of the inner wing around here, um, and you bolt the rear seat support to the other side of them. These clearly need to come off because they're going to be welded on to the other one. So that's the original inner wing there, and that's that's the piece I need. Just going to get busy with the with the with the drill, with the drill, with the drill, with the drill, with the drill. It's all fairly straightforward stuff, really. Um, that there, I think, is the original line for the wheel arch. I'm not convinced. We'll line it up once once I got the floor piece off. I'll be able to double check exactly where we are um, and then I probably won't keep that piece there I want to keep that bit up there probably make that up again really couldn't I it's useful to keep these things as templates <coughs> if nothing else more or less exactly like that um, so taking the floor piece off it tidied up this edge up here and it fits straight back in again more or less exactly to the welds. You see there, the weld I cut through, um, you see that was quite a thick welding cut there, but it all lines up. So I'm gonna um, make a pattern out of that piece, um, and then I don't know where the one's gone from the other side. If I can't find it, I'll just reverse this one. Oh, there goes the light. I'll just reverse this one. Um, might have a bit of a fabrication day today. A bit of laugh, isn't there? Well, there's enough of that come off that uh, I can use it. Never chuck anything away, folks. Never. Never, ever, 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 ever. So long as your arse points south. But then you end up being a hoarder. Um, just check there's nothing over here. It's paint sticks today. I've had the heater going, so it's warmed up the workshop a little bit. Oh, yes. Good old flow. I don't know if this is this has gone completely off now. I might leave it another day just so because it's an enamel paint I use rustonium on this uh, just because it's tough and it goes on nicely and when it's all settled out you can't see many brush marks on it either. I'm quite pleased with the way it self levels. That's been all been brush applied. No fucking around. Brush it on. Um <coughs> right. Okay, so that's that piece. Let's do these now. It's fairly easy. I mean, all I really do is just clean this side back. Might clean that side back in fact. Just clean this side back. Find out where the spot welds are. Dot them with the red pen. Drill them. Well, I'm not using spot weld drills because I never get on with them, to be honest. <laughs> just drill a four mil hole and then use the step drill. Um, and I've done hundreds of spot welds with Okay, I broke a drill a bit earlier on, but a 4 mil drill will probably do about a dozen of these fuckers down here. And whenever I use a spot weld drill, it lasts about two spot welds. And I lube them as well. So, drill, lube, treffle X, get it. It's brilliant. Just dip the end of the drill bit in it. Drill. When the drill starts to squeak or if it starts to smoke, drill it. There you go. Every bloody time works a treat. Alright then, I'll show you. Um... There's a bit of gloop on the back of this one. Um, what's going on there? There's a bit of body signal or something. Comes off nice and well done, dump. This is what happens to the old um, <coughs> uh, body signal stuff. Just goes brittle. I'm afraid. 
<coughs> so when you find it, just get rid of it. I don't know why all this is here. Because this rust underneath it doesn't mean anything, unfortunately. This uh, the water would have got up and underneath it right now. Let's stop gabbing on about that. Let's see. What I'm going to do here is just it might work from this side on this one. I'm taking this one off, you see. Let's work on this side. So, <coughs> coffee, coffee, cough. Coffee, coffee, coffee. Oh, that's not a bad idea. No coffee, no worky. Right. I just want that paper to be fucking stunk. White stuff. Probably best not breathe that shit in, eh, Richard? Um, <clears throat> right. So I can see one there, 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 one there, one there. That's it. Got spot welts on that one. I will plug it in. Hello. Tell me spot well drills are brilliant. I should use them. I'm a ham just to give them. They're not using spot well drills, but. This step drill I've had since the beginning of the Allen project. And I've done a fair amount of drilling, I tell you. What you do is you go with an angle. What I might do on this side actually is drill from this side because I can see where the edges are then, I can see where the nuts are. Two. Nice big plug weld holes. Now, one thing that you will notice, uh, there's quite a lot of metal on this, and that metal is blistering hot. So my top tip is to use gravity. Otherwise you will invent new swear words. Easy as that. There probably was no need for the fantasy then, Richard. Where is the fun in that? Uh, my other top tool for the day. When I was at the uh, metal fabricators getting my new welding gas bottle. They had all this H beam stuff sitting around in skips. I said, oh chap, let's have a bit of old H beam. Now we had bits that were like two foot, three foot, four foot, so forth, but I don't know. Anyway, he found this little bit for me, and even though he was only prepared to give me this four inch section of HP, it is fucking brilliant, because basically you've got a nice straight edge on it, you use it as an amp, basically. Uh, you've got all manner, I'm okay, I can flat that bit out there. You've got a nice straight edge there, just file the edges off it. So if you can, you've got a decent metal fabricator near you. Let's see if you can scrounge a bit of HP off. Don't nick it, ask nicely. Um, so I'm not advocating you going skip dipping. Skip dipping is not a good idea. 
Um, we have to ask first of all because if the skip is on public roads, public road, then the contents of the skip belong to the skip company, and if it's on private land, then the contents of the skip belong to um, whoever owns the land. So don't skip dip, but ask nicely. And you've got things like this. I can use it for all manner of ways, just as, just as an anvil, just as a very, 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 very basic dolly. Um, it's only really for straightening edges out. In fact, I used this just now to get these edges all straight again. In fact, there's a bit there that's not that shitty. I'll just then use the... Beautiful. Right, that's that. Now, next, we're going to do a bit of fabrication, I think. These just want cleaning up, and I'm going to weld these straight back on again. I think clean that up. Um, you can see here, bare steel. This is quite common in Land Rover circles. Um, there, there is nothing on there. That is bare steel. Um, and it's quite common um, in, in, you know, <laughs> when you're doing this sort of shit. You can see there is shiny bare steel, but there is just... And here it's rusting because the water's going between it. And this is how I find the insides of the doors when I, when I rip the door apart. So whenever I see anyone that's selling me a rust-free door, and there's a particularly amusing one at the moment, <laughs> it's on eBay saying, no rust, and honestly, it's the rustiest door I've seen in ages. Um, maybe it meant rust is free. Um, but yeah, that's quite common, that, unfortunately. That, for some reason, they just didn't paint the, uh, the, the faces when they weren't fully assembling. That, you see, that's been painted inside. That's had some sort of zinc paint put on it. Uh, you can see the difference in colour. So before that was welded on. But I bet you, if I take this plate off here, there'll be no paint between that and that. Um, it is what it is. Yet more fitting up. Right, OK. Front inner wings went on. Um, and I was having a struggle with the front inner wings because um, I couldn't get them both to line up properly. Um, and these are the DDS panel. So I will share my findings with you. They're pretty good. I mean, I, I quite like them. Let's just lift the bonnet right up so we can and rest it on the windscreen. And ever so gently, poof. Honestly, they landed more softly than when they landed on the moon. Right. Now, Inner wings. They're in the position I want them to be at the moment, exactly where they want to be. So I've got the front mountings are down here. I've got the slam panel on. As you can see, I've fitted up the whole of the front end. Everything lines up. Got a pair of front wings on it. Uh, they're mounted on here and they're mounted on the back of the car here. I put the deck panel on. I was rather hoping we were going to be able to kind of patch this one up. Stave the body, right? Because it's a bit of a, a bit of a tall order, this one, because of the hole. Could always put a big old um Snorkel through there, couldn't we? Have the exhaust coming up through there, perhaps, Bob? No, I don't think so. Now, um, those of you familiar with these earlier cars, the ones that are bolted together, there's two bolts that go through the inner wing and they bolt onto the inside here. The holes on the inner wing are a centimetre further back than they should be. Now, I have been through absolutely everything and quadruple checked. And this is part of the reason why I've been lining all the panels up. Because when these things go in for paint, I don't want to be kind of <laughs> chopping them up anymore. I double checked from here to the front, absolutely sp spot on both sides, because obviously I've welded these, these dumb irons back on the front here. I measured from the body mount to the front. I measured from the body mount to here. Everything is absolutely on the nail. The only thing that will not fit is the bolts through the side of the bulkhead. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drill extra holes through the side of the bulkhead. That's the easiest way of doing it. But everything lines up. No, no more bananas. That's not pushed in properly at the top up there. But look at it. A little bit out down there. Don't worry about shit like that. That's that's neither here nor, nor there. Um, the bottom of the door is out. I'm not, bear in mind, I've done no shimming whatsoever on these doors at all yet. Because the top hinge needs to go that way a tiny bit. Uh, I need to get the frames on the doors before we even start pissing around with that. This dent down here, possible. We're not saying anything yet, it's possible. We might better pull that one out. Because the rest of the skin, looking at it now, as we look down the side of the car, the, the skin is bulging out and then back in again, as it should do. Okay? It's not helped, really, by this thing sticking out here. So I might have to just zip tie that just to hold it into place. But when you're looking down this way, you can see the door skin is actually the right shape for the profile of the car 
it's just this bit down here is pushed in. Um, these may or may not be the wings that I use. Pardon me, if I do use these wings, I'm just going to, be going to take the side repeaters off, blank them in. I'm a bit limited on front indicators at the moment. Uh, they're the correct style in that they've got the screw on covers, but the, the incorrect style in that they've got this black um, edge down here. But the ones that haven't are unobtainium. We'll see if someone's going to remake them. I'm sure Jackie Valandre were remaking them. That's not the best one there, is it? I might get a better light fitting than that. This wing here, nicely. Obviously, we've got door skin missing. There's nothing I can do about that. And I've taken this back wing off because I wanted to start um, prepping uh, this wing up and getting it ready for paint. I put the steering column supporting because I wanted to make sure that the work I did on the bulkhead uh, was in alignment. So I bolted up to the top edge here, and as you can see, holes back in spot on. Oh, yes. Um, so I'm on the body mounts here, I'm on the body mount there. Two sills body mounts are in place, and the body mounts are on the goalpost. So all the body mounts now are in, they're not tightened up, but the car's starting to look square and straight. Once I've got this body frame done and before I paint I'm going to pop it up on springs I think um, and see how square it actually sits because I want to start working on the axles and so forth it's got a bit of a low rider stance at the moment got the roof panel to drop down up here which is what was causing that d-post cover not to fit I mean once I pulled it all into place the roof dropped down another d-post cover which is here one-handed goes on I just need to get the bolt holes here a minute there's, there's there's bolts on a plate that go down the back there and they just need to push through the side frame it's wobbly because I haven't welded up the bottom edge yet um, I'm doing this one on the car and I thought because that's going to be a pain in the balls there I'm doing this one on the bench this fella over here now one thing you might not have considered on this d-post um, trim it's not flat in fact, it's quite a long way from being flat. Let's lay it on the bench and get down here. And you can see the curvature on this panel. So whatever repair goes in needs to be in two parts and it's going to need to match the profile there, which is why I wanted to, if possible, utilize this bit, which I have lost. <laughs> You couldn't make this shit up, Richard, could you? Where the fuck's that gone then? Because I was looking at it, just thinking just now, oh, that's really useful. Is it in my box of... This is all my box of treasure down here. The raw shape for the seat box. Seat belt mounts. Rear seat mounts. That's the profile for the... Yeah, this bit. That's the bit I'm looking for. I'm rather hoping, because that has also got... A curve on it but I can splice that on there and maintain the curve that's the idea behind it and obviously I should just drill the hole through where it needs to go that's a much longer repair required on this side than uh, here on the back end of the car I'll just take the d-post off again here I've got quite a, a localized area to repair and I can probably get away with that um, just with some very, very light shrinker stretcher action. Um, but this one, that's a fair amount more. You can see this. Oh dear, tape measure. We're having a day of it today, I tell you. Look at that, Saturday afternoon. Five o'clock, four o'clock, So, What are you talking about, Richard? This is gonna be my next challenge in here. I'll show you that in a second. We're missing, in fact, I can measure it on this, can't I? because that goes on there like that and that wants to go like that so I am missing about 14 mil sorry 140 mil 14 mil again Richard you're just talking bollocks aren't you so I shall replicate that piece nice flange on the bottom of it butt weld that up there and then cut that to suit and it'll all go on job for tomorrow or perhaps even Monday I might be uh, giving some the missus some peace and quiet tomorrow 
Right, let's um, pop the bonnet back down again. Hey. This may or may not be the bonnet that I use. Um, overall, the bonnet isn't bad. Um, it's got some rust surface issues. There's quite a big patch of rust on the frame underneath here. The worst piece of rust, as you probably see, is on this corner over here. But none of this will see this bonnet scrapped. It's not a bad one. just needs cutting out, welding back in. Skimmer filler, Bosch, done. Deck panel might be a challenge. Um, right, OK, this gearbox cover. So what I'm doing here is seeing how this cover fits in over the LT77 um, Borg Warner as it stands right now, and it doesn't, you can see it doesn't. So I'm gonna to have to cut here, so it goes over the top. And then when it's gone over the top, what I then need to do is to put the long stick uh, conversion on and find out how that then fits on with all of the other bits and bobs, because I've not actually tried a long stick conversion in a Range Rover on an LT77. That's the high-low lever, that's not the gear lever. We want the gear lever kind of in that position um, and looking at it now, and this is the reason I put the dash top on it, and I'll, I've got a spare heater up here, I can choose one of these Duck Vaders up here just to bolt to the bulkhead, just to give me the uh, kind of the rough dimensions of where the heater unit's going to go in. Um, and then I've got the trim panel that goes underneath it and around the front of the heater, just so I can work out where the gear stick needs to be. And if the gear stick's going to go on, are we going to be able to get it even into first gear? These are all the challenges we have to go through here. It is a day of great excitement at Church House Classics. For yesterday, Tuesday, I drove up to um, Tim Hammond's dad's house in North Norfolk, proper up in North Norfolk, bloody sugar beet and pig country. Marvellous, but picked up this, uh, this Range Rover EFI lump. Now, I don't want the EFI stuff off it, that belongs to Tim. Um, so I'm going to unbolt that, but it comes automatic flex plate. I've got a manual. Uh, gearbox uh, uh, flywheel for it. I've got all of the cam covers and everything largely off boat anchor number one. Uh, this engine turns, I'm reliably informed that it runs beautifully and it's been correctly stored. So the plan for today really is to remove the inlet manifold, uh, get all the EFI stuff out of the way um, and boxed and ready for Tim. Um, and next time I see him I'll, I shall handle that back to him. Um, and see what we've got here basically but it looks all right turns it's got most of the ancillaries that i need ready just to be able to drop it straight in uh, it's even got the mounts on it look um so <clears throat> the idea is if i can prove that this is a a good one and i'll run a compression check on it and i'll take the uh, valley gasket out look at the state of the cam and so forth because while it's all apart i might as well i need to take the water pump off because some gibbon has gone through it with a angle grinder rather than undoing it um, and then when paddocks finally managed to ship me my uh, my clutch my five-speed clutch I shall put it onto the manual flywheel and it will go in I do love a mouse nest in an engine.
Ugh. I was rather hoping that it hasn't eaten through the uh, the tin gasket, but we're all looking okay at the moment. All this crap up here just came out um, when I was just lifting because it suddenly gave way to fucking thing. Um, I was trying desperately to, to make sure I didn't get too much crap in there. I'll just get the air gun round it. Worst case is I'll just lift the heads off. Uh, but that's not really too much of a problem at this stage. Um, it's not really Black Death, it's just like it's been a long time since it's had its oil change. Um, there's some hard deposit in there, but pretty healthy actually. For a, a, a Rover V8 of an unknown kind of quantity. There's a fair few nuts in here. Yes. Right, let's get the um let's get the other. Get this valley gasket out and then we'll see what's going on inside, I think. <clears throat> then I'm gonna do a compression check. Pissing up with rain out there. Absolutely fuck this is not a little bit, a lot bit. Right. Yeah. Well, the gasket was in package. 